Friday, March 25th. I almost said 15th. March 25th, 22. Thank you for being here. Thank you for pursuing God with me. Let's get started. So we're wrapping up our conversation about true love. It's been two weeks of reminding ourselves that God has loved us from the very beginning and he will love us for all of eternity. And that he has never changed and that love is as strong today as it has ever been. We find evidence of that in Deuteronomy and specifically as we suggested yesterday that the things that we call the Ten Commandments are simply the same theme that has been spoken throughout God's Word. Just two simple rules. Love God with everything that you are and love one another. Love your neighbors. So today we're talking the second commandment that Jesus references. Love your neighbor as yourself. How we are treated and how we treat others has a tremendous impact on how we develop as people. How we develop as individuals, certainly, but how we develop as a, a culture. It is apparent by anyone's standard that our culture is evolving into a a me first culture. Now, were people a hundred years ago speaking these same words? Perhaps. But just by observation, by, by social media, by all of the things that are currently in our lives, many of us believe that life is all about us. And how much I can gain, not only from experiences, as we have spoken about on Sunday, but how much can I gain from others? It's a marketplace. God's word is much different. God's word is focused on giving ourselves away. Being kind. Being aware of others' needs and helping be the hands that meet those needs. If asked which culture would we prefer to live in, I imagine we'd say we'd like to live in a culture where people were kind to one another. Consider it. But what happens is, and we've experienced ourselves, is I give and I give and I give and I get nothing back. Everyone else is indulging in their own things. And at some point we're like, if that's how everybody else is going to be, then why am I trying so hard? I'll just do the same thing. And that's where we lose as individuals, and that's where we lose ground as a culture. That's why we lose ground with our relationship with God. It's coming to the point where we're like, why bother? They look like they're having more fun, and they're getting more rewards. Why bother going through all of this? When I trust people, when I, I try to care for people, it just sets me up for heartache and wounds. The answer is simple. And it comes from the first commandment to love God with everything they are. If you say that you love God, then you're called to love his children. can't love God and hate his children. And 
And as we open today, how we treat one another shapes us. And as we shared on Sunday, God is in the shaping of hearts business. So the more that we learn to use the instruments that he has blessed us with, the more we learn to treat each other with respect and love and mercy and grace, the better our heart becomes. And the impact that we can make in our community becomes profound. So just as yesterday, we spoke of breaking these stone tablets to two categories. Love God with everything you are, which we talked about yesterday. And then the remaining commandments that we often see as just a list of rules. I want you today to recognize as God simply saying, love one another. Deuteronomy 5, 6. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy as the Lord your God has commanded you. Now this one is perhaps a transitional commandment in that there is this honoring God and recognizing, you know, to follow what he is asking us to do. But it's more than that. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But on the seventh day is, is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your ox, your donkey, or your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns so that your male and female servants may rest as you do. So the Sabbath is a day that's set aside, and often we think of it as a day to set aside to, to worship the Lord, and that's a perfectly good thing to do with a day that you are not focused on, on work. But it's also a day to honor those who you lead, to honor your neighbors, recognizing not only does God recognize that we need a day of rest, but so do those that we are called to care for. And God's list goes down to even the animals that help us accomplish those tasks or the animals that in the day were the tractors and the, 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 the ones that did the heavy lifting. So when we speak of the Sabbath, we're not only speaking of honoring God, we're honoring God by how we treat others. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live a long, live long and that it may go well with you in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Remember what we said from the beginning of, of today's study. How we treat one another shapes our hearts. How are we going to love our Father in heaven to fear and respect our Father in heaven if we do not fear and respect those God has placed over us here? God gives us all of these relationships so that our hearts may be crafted and we learn how to love. For many of us, or some of us, it may be a challenge because we don't feel that our father or our mother treated us well. The 
the lesson that God has for us is that we are to, to love even those that are, are difficult to love. You are going to be placed in many situations where the authority over you is not what you would want it to be. And God calls us to love them anyway, to respect them anyway, to honor them as we would honor God himself. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You wouldn't do any of those things if you were truly setting out to love your neighbor as yourself. How many rules do we need to list after this one of things that you shouldn't do to your neighbor? Or we could sum it up and say, just love your neighbor. Before you steal from your neighbor, consider that your neighbor has to pay bills and has to put food on the table for his children. We excuse how we treat others by focusing on all the things that we want, all the things we feel we need. We see others as barriers to us being able to achieve those things. And it starts with one selfish person creating a chain of selfish people after that. It can be reversed in the same way by one selfless person that chooses to have compassion towards others even though they are being treated poorly. I refuse to continue this chain. That's what God is calling here in Deuteronomy, God is calling on the children of Israel to represent, to represent well. There are my children set aside in love to demonstrate what it is to live within the boundaries that I have set for them. And the Israelites fell short. And now it is our opportunity. There are my children. I have invited them into my kingdom to be representative of me, to be my ambassadors. I have set them aside so the world might see and know my love. How are we doing? How are you doing? Good news is you've been given an opportunity today to do better. These are the commandments that the Lord proclaimed in a loud voice to your whole assembly there on the mountain from out of the fire, the cloud and the deep darkness. And he added nothing more than he wrote them on two stone tablets and gave them to me. God desired to keep it simple. And what we call the Ten Commandments, he says, is just the basics of how to be in right relationship with me. And 
And if we search our hearts, we already know these things without having to read them off of a stone tablet. We know how to treat others with compassion. We certainly know what pleases God and displeases God and how to stay within those boundaries. We just too often choose something different. Out of the, I'm going to get mine spirit. I encourage you today to allow God to remove that spirit from you and truly pursue true love. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for demonstrating what love is. We thank you, Lord, for your selflessness, for the tremendous sacrifice that you made for us to even be having this conversation today. Lord, I ask that you would guide us as we let go of the things that we thought we knew and adopt new ways, better ways. No matter how selfish the world becomes, we choose today to live selflessly. Recognizing you, living this way to honor you, but also recognizing the work that you desire to do in our hearts that we are fully investing in, knowing that we are our best selves if we choose to live as you have called us to live. We will change the world, and they will know us by our love. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I'll see you on Sunday. Know that I love you and I miss you. Meantime, please be good. Mm -hmm.